Hello, my name is Roy and welcome to Cross Cultural Adventures. Now, in the episode last week, we explored the Ingelhart and Wilsel model that highlights a more dynamic approach to the influence of cultural orientations. This week we will investigate a new model introduced by Lewis that is much more action focused. It also narrows down to and prioritizes issues of cross cultural styles. Lewis is an expert both on culture and languages. He speaks many European languages and two East Asian languages. His research is based on visiting unbelievably 135 countries and data collected from around 50,000 directors globally. He also lived in several countries uh, for significant periods of time. Most important, his model is frequently referred to as the most practical and easiest to apply in relation to everyday communication. Nothing special. Moreover, perhaps uniquely in many ways, this model interestingly is not based on nationality, or well, there's a surprise, or on economic development or religion, but exclusively on behavior. So finally, Lewis introduces three, what he calls, three cultural type categories. We're going to look at them now. And these are multi-active, reactive, and linear active. While also important to us, listing the placement of many nations within these categories. So okay, first step, what are these Lewis categories? Well, the first is multi-active. People within multi-active cultures, and remember we're looking exclusively at behavior, tend to be extrovert, speak a lot, are people oriented, highly social, and very diverse in their actual attention to issues. They can interrupt and disrupt frequently in conversation, show genuine affection and willingness to talk, talk about their feelings. Indeed, displays of body language and gestures when making general plans and a flexibility to all approaches to, for example, this is interesting, you might be, might find this is strange, they're very flexible in terms of the concept of truth. Well, and they're able s successfully unlike most people, to kind of integrate personal and professional life comfortably. The next group are reactive. These are clearly very opposite behavioral patterns. Reactive 
people in reactive cultures are introvert. They're listeners much more than talkers. They never interrupt. They never disturb other people. They remain composed, silent, patient. They have limited body language signals, but these signals are very clear to the, those that know what they are. In terms of language, they're indirect speakers. We've covered this. They hide their feelings in a, any professional context. Demonstrating feelings is thought to be rather unprofessional. They're calm, they're punctual, they are value dip diplomacy more than truthfulness. That's in common with the previous category. And But they take own goals and objectives very, very seriously. Then the third category are called linear active. Once again, these, these people are notably introvert. They're listeners, and, but they're listeners and speakers. They are able to focus and provide undivided attention. What they say is structured, firm and specific. Again, they display rather limited body language and gestures but they're highly linear they're, these are planners and they take a lot of time planning actions step by step by step and therefore sometimes become impatient they stick to facts refer to logic and very defensive about their own good name. Consequently, as one would expect, they respect the law. They va now di here comes the difference. They value truth more than diplomacy. And again, very different. They like their privacy. There is a distinct separation between their private personal life which is thought to be of nobody else's business and this professional life so on this basis Lewis created a comprehensive model in which he placed all of the major nationalities in the world in a kind of single scale within this linear active multi-active and reactive types. And this is, he calls, the culture triangle. So let's have a look at his, act his model in action very briefly. It's just an introduction and attach some nations and relationships to the model. Okay, so his model, remember, is very people-orientated relationships. That's what he's focusing on. And in that context, yet again, let's remind ourselves that the specific focus is on the way people behave. So, the first category in the triangle, multi-active, these people are, yes, a highly relationship focused. Relationships mean everything. It's the center of everything. Linear active, well, they're goal orientated. They're good organizers and good at planning. As I've said, they're 
which is where the name comes from, they're very monochronic, very linear active. And then, reminder again, the reactive, the third part of the triangle, these are amazing listeners. They're respect orientated. They focus on saving face. They focus on harmonious relationship with the group. Now let's look at the actual relationships. So in cross-cultural encounters between multi-active and linear active, these turn out to be frequently very, very, very difficult interactions. Their perspective, their behavior, expectations are so different. Then, relationships, cultural relationships between linear active and reactive are the kind of relationship that's highly likely to be very successful both in terms of outcome and in terms of the relationship the interaction between these two groups the third relationship is between multi-active and reactive now this is very very different again there's not normally any particular conflict but the way they communicate, their relationship building, their expectations end up to be extremely time consuming interactions. Examples of nations, well, multi active, we would include Hispanic America. You know what that means, like Brazil and Mexico, and Latin Europe. You should know what that means. You know, Italy, Greece, Spain, Portugal. Interestingly, Russia. Poland is the fourth example. We don't need more than four. In goal oriented linear active rel relationships. Linear active good examples are UK, Sweden, Canada and Singapore. Quite a widespread. And then four examples of highly reactive nations would include Vietnam, China, Korea and the Philippines. So what Lewis is illustrating is not only are there three different categories of people, three different types of communication, communicators, but the, the relationship between these different groups can result in more conflict, successful outcomes or what he calls okay not conflict but they take an incredibly long period of time now as we always say you know this this is just an introduction to this model you'll see in the episode description that once again we've selected a, a reading for you which we think is accessible and interesting so if you want to know more there it is moving on to next week and our episode we're going to take a look at one of the most remarkable flexible influential uh, co cultural theorists of Edward Hall. We've actually refer referred to Edward Hall in the past, in previous episodes. 
he introduces the concept which is hugely important of direct and indirect communication styles he then later introduces issues focused on cultural differences in time orientation the famous polychronic monochronic or linear and flexible but what we're going to look at next week is his third model which he illustrates in form of an iceberg and we're going to look at these various layers of culture some immediately visible in, visible progressively reducing to those that are really not available and mysterious sometimes never known by outsiders so till then thanks for listening we do hope you join us next week in the meantime take care and goodbye